Perks of Spain. Good evening and uh, welcome everybody to tonight's broadcast where we're going to be previewing the Terry Biddlecombe National Hunt Chase and the RSA Chase. Today was Terry Biddlecombe's memorial service just a few miles away from here at Cheltenham uh, Racecourse and a nice gesture from the Jockey Club to name this year's National Hunt Chase after, after Terry. So, uh, favourite of this race is Fox Rock, who ran at uh, Navan at the weekend in the uh, Ten Up Chase. Kind of um, mixed opinions, Rory, following the uh, following his win. What did you make of it? Um, I thought it was a thoroughly professional performance. His jumping's a little bit um, sketchy still. He wouldn't be as scoopy as one or two in the race. But um, aside from needing to sort that out, he was more impressive than the bare results. He only won by half a length in the end. He was headed after the last, um, having um, disputed the lead throughout the race, essentially. But he was ridden with too much confidence by um, by Danny Mullins, for me. I think when you're on a horse who's going best coming to the last, you don't want to be in a situation where getting in tight to it loses you the race. And uh, Danny should have either asked for a bigger jump there or made sure that he was a couple of lengths there coming to the last and put the others under pressure. Um, so briefly, he was um, disadvantaged, but I didn't come away particularly well from the fence. But I thought he showed a very good, whether you call it a turn of foot, he didn't go very fast. I suppose it, w it would have been a turn of foot per se, come and win the race. Um, he also was very strong at the finish of his, of his previous race as well. Um, and clearly, he's going to stay further than three and a quarter miles in time. He hasn't been tested much beyond three miles, but he will stay the trip. This is his this is the race for him at the festival. It's not like he's going to run on the RSA. So unlike a lot of those towards the, um, the head of the market before the, the National Hunt Chase, um, he does look confirmed for it. And those who weren't impressed by his jockey will be delighted to know that someone else will be riding. Probably Katie Wolf. <laughs> you mentioned the um, increase in trip there. Better suited by the longer trip, do you think? Definitely. Um, and again, if you look at, he wouldn't be the, the top rated horse in the contest at the moment, but those who are higher rated, say on time form figures, for example, would be very unlikely runners. Bally Casey will never run in this. Don't cross that similarly. I would have thought the pair of those might be best short of three miles from what I've seen of them so far. Uh, Morning Assembly, uh, Black Thunder, possibly. Uh, Black Thunder might. Morning Assembly will go the RSA. Um, Corin Wood might go this way. He would, he would have uh, claims in this race, but again, I think the RSA is probably the preferred option for him. Um, and while Shotgun Paddy will be more likely to run on this than the RSA, there is talk about him missing Cheltenham altogether. So, all of a sudden, Fox Rock looks the, the prime candidate. There are lots of interesting horses in here, but if you're looking to, to form the market and you want to know who to put at the, the head of it, Fox Rock is, um, is a solid favourite. It wouldn't necessarily be my bet in the race at this stage, but um, I wouldn't argue with him being favourite for the contest. Benny, uh, Rory just mentioned Corin Wood there, and uh, we've actually had quite a few um, questions and comments over Twitter. For example, uh, Lee Medhurst says, uh, why is everybody overlooking Corin Wood? Will be hard to pass and jumps like a stag. And uh, yeah, might go for the RSA, but whichever race, what do you think of Corin Wood? Yeah, I think he's a highly likable horse, but um, Jason Maguire was commenting today after he won a race in uh, mm. Suggle that he's probably more than likely to go for the RSA, but I think this is probably a better option for him. He looks a thorough stayer. He's a good jumper. I think he might he mightn't be classy enough for the RSA. I'd say the this four miler would probably be his best chance of winning a race in Cheltenham, but it looks like slightly they're leaning towards going towards the RSA. Um, there's two Irish horses here that I'd be very interested in at at uh, biggish prices. The first is Double Seven, who uh, racked up a five timer. Um, in the summer and is a uh, long-term target for the Grand National but if it, he was to turn up here um, he started off as win and run at, uh, I think at uh, rated 111 ended up at uh, in the mid 140s um, he's a he, he's a very very likable horse and I think four mile around Cheltenham he's an excellent jumper he travels well um, he's kind of came in under the radar for both this race and the um, the Grand National like Fox Rock as as uh, Rory says, he he looks the part. You know, Ted Walsh has aimed him at this race for quite a while. But I think Double Seven would be a horse if he turns up on the day. 
like his Grand National is his prime target, but if he was to turn up here at around 16 to 1, he'd have a cracking chance. Uh, Martin Brazel trains him. Um, he's sure to have a good amateur on his back. Uh, there's one other horse I was looking at, would be a horse belonging to Willie Mullins. Uh, he's called Banalus, Banalus Slow. And, and like his name, he is actually quite slow, but I mean, four mile around Cheltenham. Um, I think it'd be right up the street. He's, he he would need slightly better ground than what he's been running on. He was actually fourth into Kai Esther's last time out, which is quite a, a good run, really. And I think this is the only race, realistically, he can run at the festival. Um, he's around the 25 to 1 mark. And he, I'd say he's definitely going to turn up. He could be Patrick's ride in the race. Uh, Giggins Town own him. Um, he's a, definitely a, a doer steer. And as he is a little bit slow, like his name suggests, but four mile around Cheltenham, I think it'd be ideal, and I'd say he'd be Willie Mullins' main target for the race, because Bally Casey's more than likely to go to the RSA, so double seven and Banless Low for me at 16 to 1 and 25 to 1 would be two I'd be looking at, but Fox Rock is very solid, but 7 to one's a bit skimpy for me for what he's done, so that would be my view on the race. Dan, uh, Will Johnny raises the issue of uh, experience for um, for this and the, uh, the RSA chase. Is it important for a horse to be experienced over fences in these two races? Uh, experience is, well, it depends on, if a horse is a bad jumper then you want as much experience as possible, if he's a good jumper then I don't think um, experience is that much of an issue. Um, in relation to the National Hunt Chase which we're talking about, I think uh, I'll go back to Rory on, on this because uh, I'm I'm going to echo whatever what what everything he he wrote in a column earlier this week about an outsider to look out for, and that's midnight prayer. So, Rory, did you want to talk his chances? Because I know you like him a fair bit, and I like the way, like you say, experience about jump, and I love the way he jumped at Warwick. Yeah, he's a he's a horse I like a lot. He's a, he's come from left field. He wasn't a particularly good hurdler. He was um uh, beaten behind some. Um, Captain's paper horse tracking it over to the entry in May of a mark of 123, but he's already looked a better. I mean, he's he's got a he's a really big, scoopy, um, staying chaser in looks, and he immediately improved in what he'd done over hurdles from beating Adrenaline Flight easily at uh, Stratford in October, despite um, not being best placed the way that race went. He made a mistake very early in the race and got in a bad position, but from then on, he was very good indeed. He was very unlucky to uh, unseat after being hampered on his next start uh, and finishing second to Ben Bolio at Newbury in December was a decent performance before absolutely destroying a poor field over three and a quarter miles of Warwick last time out. The interesting thing about that Warwick race is that it's the race that Alan King won last year with Godsby Judge before he ran well in the National Hunt Chase and used that as a stepping stone for the Scottish National and I have Midnight Prayer as a very similar horse, a horse who's already capable of running in a running very well in a regional national, maybe a Scottish national, um, maybe he'll be waiting until until next season for that. But he's a nine-year-old already, um, already an assured jumper, a thorough stayer, I mean a really thorough stayer, uh, and therefore, you know, you look at this race and you see class your horses, horses are, capable, horses are capable of better form over hurdles, horses with ratings in the 140s, 150s over fences already, um, and Midnight Prayer doesn't look as sexy as some of those but a lot of those sexy horses will be going for either the JLT or the RSA um, and the four miler is a race that is always won by a horse unsurprisingly who stays that sort of trip very well indeed um, so what he might lack in um, in tool he'll make up for in stamina uh, and he's one that's you have to dig through the, the, um, the entries to find him at the moment but once you start looking at his form and his makeup and if you see him in the flesh uh, you would fall in love with him. So he's um, for me, he was much the most interesting outsider. There's still a bit of 25 to one about him, even now, but only with a small firm. Corals are 25s until um, this morning, I think. Um, I wouldn't like to think that I've moved that market, but um, <laughs> and again, I still think you know closer to the race, you'll still get a price about him because there's there's still going to be very big yards represented with um, horses with Grade One form in there, and therefore Midnight Prayer, who's come from a a rather darker background is going to be a biggish price. I think it's going to be 20s odd, um, at least you know whenever declarations come out. So you don't have to rush to back them at this stage. I don't think there's a huge amount of liquidity in the market. Bookies aren't falling over themselves to offer big prices and equals for this. But as they get closer to the day, um, a few days beforehand, or even at declaration time, you'll still get a decent price about them. So 
is one to work on. If you'd like to uh, find out more about Rory's analysis of the National Hunt Chase, uh, you've written a very detailed blog post on cheltenhamtips.co.uk recently, haven't you, Rory? So uh, I would advise viewers to uh, to check that out. Yeah, Dave, just, just a um, minutes, Dave um, of the leading contenders, which uh, which one would catch your eye? Um, I would have liked Scotland Paddy to have turned up, um, but I don't, as, as Roy says, I think it's unlikely, I think he's, he's going to be fine from what we've had. I've been quite taken with him the case, he's Roy Miller, he's in, in the flesh, so um, no fluke that day uh, when he beat just the par. Um, I'll throw another one into the mix, there's another one I quite like actually, at a, a bit of a price, um, and that's Edmund Keane, so I think we'll go here rather than go to the RSA and say be fine. I think they've just taken off my a little bit in the RSA. Um, but I don't think he's done anything wrong in two starts. I was quite proud, I was quite impressed with him at last the first time up where he was, was a bit careful. He didn't make any mistakes, he just went bad and a bit careful. And then I thought his Ludlow run was, was a really good run on quite a few levels. He wasn't quite like, went off four to six. He wasn't entitled to win that race on form. He was on to power with the horse to beat form. But every time he came to in the race, he just kept putting in the best when we were on front of the and taking the normal length of him. And he had to watch three or four times during the race. No wonder he got excited on the running. I mean, you know, people say, oh, another 50 yards and the run got back up now. That's by the best of the best of the race for me. was Edmund Jumper. And I'm both okay on right handed so far this season. I think he would be even better when he goes left handed. Um, a lot of good form is left so I think it's quite interesting. I've earned about 20 to 1. Thanks, Dave. Just having a bit of trouble hearing you there. And uh, yeah, I'm getting a bit of feedback myself, actually. Can you just check your um, bandwidth setting there? I'm going to do, do the same in a second. Um, just going over to Jack for the, um, for the betting. I can't imagine there's been much betting interest in, in this race. Would I be correct in thinking that, Jack? Yeah, it's not really one of the sexy races, it? especially with so many horses having double and in some cases treble entries. Uh, Fox Rock's always been the Antipas' favourites, more or less. Uh, he clipped him six from sevens after a few win at the weekend, like Rory. So I just kind of impressed the way he, he found a bit more and he looked like he could stay. He'll be laid out for a ring. No Danny Williams is a positive in my eyes. Um, but I would, be, I would be keen to take him on it. Take him on at six two. He's not six one like so we're not gonna free back, so there should be a bit of interest in there. Uh shotgun pad eight, Devons, coin with eight. Uh whether Paul Michael's one will be fancy, he's got Sam Will in there. Uh Sam Will Black Thunder and Chris Car on the race, X two thousand sixteen. I think the Irish also come to the day. Double seven as uh, Benny mentioned, he's got all his best forms on good ground. He's interesting at fourteen and some of the horse he beat. Uh, in a competitive three mile handicap chase, uh, Spring Heel for June quality. I fancy him at a price of 33 to 1. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty weak market. Bet it with better than respect with the likes of the shotgun, Paddy, Corrymood, somewhere. Nobody knows, uh, not even probably the owners know where they're going to go. So it's pretty much a guessing game at the moment. But I'm sure it's 61 favourite with us. Moving on to the RSA, and um, yeah, there's a lot of. Uh, of doubt about uh, which one's going to go in which, which race day. Um, Bally Casey, the favourite, so he looks pretty certain to, uh, to run. And um, all credit to Ed Mishu in uh, November, who put up uh, Bally Casey as a sort of uh, sleeper in the, uh, in the market in jprofessible.com. And uh, also to Adam Webb, who actually um, gave Bally Casey a mention way back in uh, July. Um, Brian Crookshank on Twitter says, does Bally Casey look too speedy or will he be tough enough for the RSA? Any of you, Dave? Um, I don't think he's too speedy. Uh, I think Dave said he's up with that. Um, I think the big problem with the RSA uh, are, when you look at the race, as it goes, is how many of the, um, the main protagonists are going to want to go with it. It's going to be a race of data run at a thousand miles an hour from the outset. Um, look, there's too many of them. Um, Corey Woods is going to want to share the front. Bally Casey's probably going to want to share the front. 
Well, Anna, Anna Cotty's certainly going to want to share in the front. Many Cloud isn't going to want to be too far away. The, it, it's a race that's front-loaded with pace, and as such, they can't all lead. Um, and I think it's going to be it's going to be a, a bit of a rule supreme year. I think something that perhaps hasn't got the class um, of, of maybe one or two in the race is going to be able to sit off them and pick them up late on. It's going to be it's going to be a brutal race. I mean, it's one of my favourite races of the festival. It always is every year because it presents you know a, a chance to see your future staying stay stars and, and you go. But it's just I look at it this year and I do worry that it's going to bottom an awful lot of these horses out. And Bally Casey might just be one of them. I'm not saying he's soft or anything. I don't think he is. But this is going to be an awfully different test for a lot of these Irish horses than they've been used to. Um, I think when you're looking at it, I do, I do quite like the Nichols pair. And I, I know I've spoken to Rory about this. I, I can just, at a price, I can see just a par one in a good race. Because he, he, everything he's done so far, every quote that you look at when he's had his race has the same quote. He's green, he's green, he's green. And after he won at Newbury, after, he, after his victory at Newbury, I think it was in November, Paul Nichols came out and said, well, not the game to the Felton. He's not a Felton. And where did he end up? He ends up in the Felton. So I think that was completely the wrong race for him. This, this sort of race, because all this horse does will gallop. And I can just see him being sort of knocked right off the pace. Because he jumps perfectly well. The jumping is very, very sound. I've not seen him really make a proper mistake yet. So if you can drop him out of the back, I could see this actually turning into... Because you, you don't want a three-miler for this race. You don't, you're not looking for three-milers. You're effectively looking for a three-and-a-half-miler. In terms of that. And I think this car is... I think the problem is, it's going to end up with a four-mile. But then again, he has got a decent backup in Black Thunder. Um, I think we've already forgotten that Black Thunder beat Many Clouds fairly easily early on the season off level weight. So many Clouds has broke that form on numerous occasions. And he's another one. I was really impressed with the way he travelled over hurdles on more than one occasion last year. Um, he was still travelling following the Coral Cup. It was too far out to say what would have happened. But when he came down with the Coral Cup, um, he, he was still going pretty well that day. And he's another one that would have been a decent pace and I'll get a bit further. Uh, um, and we've got a bit of a this, haven't we? Because he, he's done so well this season. Uh, people thought that the Felton was a bit of a fluke. And we felt he was a bit of a flat track bully, if you like. That needed his own way up front. I think the run at Cheltenham behind Indian Castle showed two things. One, he's not a flat track bully. He's perfectly, he's perfectly capable on an undulating track. And two, that he can battle if need be as well. And on the clock, that's just about the best run. At... So I think it's I think it's wide open. As I say, what worries me is that there's going to be a lot of a lot of horses here that want a share of the front, and I can just see it being set up for something to come off the pace. I know I know Rory's quite keen on Carlingford Lock, aren't you, Rory? But he wasn't one for me. I have to say. Fight yeah, in terms of what you talked about, um, the number of, of leading contenders for this who have made the running so far seem to want to be on the sharp end. I think it's going to suit a horse who's able to tuck in behind. And while Carlingford Lock isn't anything like the classiest horse in this race, he strikes me as being the most amenable to restraint, the horse who will be able to be settled wherever you want in a race. Um, he was a little bit unlucky at Leprosan last time when, when um, he had his ground taken at the last and unseated Tony McCoy. Uh, his form is this season is solid in handicaps. He won the, the Galway Plate. He's run very well in a Kerry National. Um, and he's got no issue with the hurly burly of a big field contest. Um, there are, you know, he's not a gold cup horse in, in waiting, and one or two of these might be. But given how the race is going to be run and how it's going to need a very hardy individual to win it, I think Carlingford Block is one of the most interesting outsiders. Wouldn't be my favourite for the race. Um, I did Andy Post. I've I've liked Morning Assembly, but he's been he's been price wise, hasn't he? Which um, would rather take some of the appeal away from him. But I do like him as an animal. Morning Assembly. I think he's a really likable type. I think he'd do better still. Uh, he doesn't come from a terribly fashionable yard and you'll end up getting bigger prices on the day. The worry with him is if, if they're going to go straight to the race with him, he'll be off the track for a long time, which is always a worry with, with um, such competitive races at the Cheltenham Festival. It is possible to bring horses there fresh, um, but in a race like the, Sun, the, the RSA, uh, I think you want to have a horse who's been in the heat of battle and who is hard fit and hardy, um, and that's a, an issue for a number of these. 
and if Morning Assembly was going to have a, a prep run, I'd be very interested, but they've been talking about sending him to the festival fresh, which puts me off to a degree, especially at his current odds. Um, one who won't lack for prep race is a Twelands boy, who, who I put up as a horse to follow at the start of the season, and was rather disappointed when he pulled up um, behind tapping to Soy at Hayden. He scooped dirty that day, um, and he's clearly a better horse than, than that suggested, uh, and then he showed that when winning the, um, the Reynolds Town at Ascot on Saturday. Um, he was helped by the fact that, that many Clydes and Jeffrey Chambertown get into a, a real battle for the lead, and a Whelan's boy was held up slightly off them by Barry Garrity, but I thought he travelled very smoothly through the race, as he always tends to. He was a lovely jumper of a hurdle last year. Everything he did over hurdles suggests that he was going to be a better chaser, just in terms of his technique, and I thought that was the effort last time out that showed that he was stepping up to the mark. Um, a lot of horses who win the Reynolds Town don't do well at Cheltenham, but a lot of them want to go right-handed, naturally, and he isn't one. He ran extremely well. Uh, he won his, his novice on um, uh, Welsh National Day last year, um, and then he uh, he ran a cracker when he was fourth in the Albert Bartlett. So going left-handed, handling soft ground at Cheltenham, not an issue for him at all, and he's of those towards the head of the market, he's the one that I like most at the moment. I mean, I would say for an RSA winner, he seems uh, sorry for a Reynolds Town winner, he seems quite a big, big price really at this uh, at this stage. Yeah, I think a lot of people are, are suggesting he was flattered by how that that race was run, and that's true to a degree. But he won with plenty in hands, and I suspect, having watched the race again, that even if they hadn't gone quite so hard in front, he still would have won it. Maybe not by the distance that he did, but um, he he deserves more credit than he's got for that at this stage. Dan, a couple uh, we haven't uh, mentioned too much so far. Uh, Smad Place and uh, Lebec. How do you how do you rate their chances? I think the the form through the season is possibly a lot better than what Lebec posted earlier in the season. I think you've got a obviously there's a cast form and the way that he looked he looked at, he looked a proper chaser. Uh, there was a, a fair enough enough to like about uh, his one at Cheltenham. So. I think he's going to be one which you're going to get a bigger price on the day because I think he'll just go sneak off everyone's radar uh, come the day. Um, I just think there'll be there'll be too many too many ahead of him in the betting. Uh, sorry, better than him on the day. Uh, Smart place. Uh, I'm not. I wasn't. I wasn't blown away by him at Newby. Um, he was a bit skew whiffed early on at a slow pace. Obviously, he picked up better when the pace increased. And as we said earlier, Corin Wood's going to go off like a scalded cat, jump right-handed and have no chance. Uh, then there's every chance that there is he will improve at Cheltenham for a quicker pace throughout the race. But he's just too neat. There's nothing um, There's nothing which suggests he's going to enjoy a gruelling test, which Dave mentioned earlier, about three mile and a quarter. Uh, whether he... He gets to three mile and a quarter. I don't, I don't, I'm not really sold on it. I'm not really sold on him being a stayer. I know Warry mentioned, I think it was last season, about sorry, last week about his hurdling form, about maybe looking a bit like a two mile five horse round Ascot was suiting him down to the ground. This time, I'm, I'm not too sure he's an RSA type. Um, many clowns is not going to stay the trip. I don't know. I don't know why he's going for the RSA. I thought he'd be a stonking bet for something like the GLT. I thought, one, Dad. I thought I thought he'd stay, and I actually thought the fast pace might help settle a bit, because he can be a bit free sometimes. No, he's a short runner. He's a short runner. He's never. I know. I know. He, maybe Leighton Aspel got into a bit of a a bargain match with uh, Tom Skew and thought, right, if I beat Jerry Chambertan for a duel coming into the straight, then I've won. Obviously, forgetting about Off Ireland's boy. But um, I think he. I think he's a bit of a short one. His best form has been over two mile. Two mile four. Um, and Black Thunder, I think Dave mentioned earlier about Black Thunder. For me, he's the one at the moment. Carlingford Lock at 14s and Black Thunder at 25s is two standouts for me. Benny, you're pretty good at uh, putting up some uh, sort of big price sneaky ones. Anything um, aside from the obvious Bally Casey from Ireland for us? Yeah, Bally Casey is very short for what he's done. Simple as that. He, because Willie Mullins trains him, he won a 3 1 race the last day. I'd be taking a view very similar to Rory on this race. Um, I've always been a big fan of Carolyn Fridlock. Um, he, he's ran in 12 or 13 chases already. I mean, some of the horses up near the top have only ran in a couple of chases. 
experience has is so vital around Cheltenham. He won the Galway Plate, which is a grueling handicap on the day. It was a terrible day. I mean, the weather was terrible. He came up the hill. He grounded out. And that's what you need in Cheltenham. You want to, if he turns in in Cheltenham within four or five lengths of the leaders, he will definitely be in the shake-up. He's such a tough horse. He jumps very well. I mean, I, I, I can't see why he's 16 to 1, 14 to 1, and uh, Martin Assembly is only 7 or 8 to 1. He beat him fair and square the last day in Leperstown. Um, he's got the like ideal profile for the race, not really, because he's ran so many times over fences and he's ran in big handicaps like the Kerry National and the Galway Plate. But he, 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 he to me, is has an outstanding chance. I would definitely pick him above Bally Casey. Like the last day, he was interfered with going to the last. Whether he would have beat Bally Casey, I'm not sure. But Cheltenham's going to play into his strengths. I mean, the hill in Galway is substantial. You're climbing for three or four furlongs. It's very similar in Cheltenham when you turn in. And some horses aren't going to act around. You can be sure he'll act around it. He'll be able to sit back mid-division wherever he wants to sit back. He's got so much experience now. He's settled in his races, which is vital. There's so many front runners in it. Like They're all going to take each other on. Half of them are going to be crying crying enough even before the turn in, oh, you know, right. because a lot of them don't have the experience. Um, there was one, uh, the, the same with uh, Rory O'Foyle and Sky. Um, you have to be very impressed what he done the weekend. If he was trained by Nicky Henderson or Paul Nichols, he'd be 7 or 8 to 1. You know, he was so impressive. And he, he was never more impressive when he at, when he jumped the last and he got it right to the line. I mean, that's what you want to see in your horses when they're looking going forward, something hitting the line strong. You know he's going to act her on the track. He ran a cracker last time the Albert Bartlett. And he always looked like a chaser. He's a big, robust horse. So they're the two for me, the same as Rory, with that current kind of opposite. We all seem to be keying up on him. But, you know, the, the stats are there. You know, he's got so much experience. And he's, he's, he's back with Harvard. He has to be in the paper around 14 to 1. And all failings by, I think if you can by Nicky Dickinson, he nearly be failing. So he's around 16 to, might be even 20 to 1 in places. Yeah, definitely for me, but that case is far too short. Jack from uh, Victor, uh, is it conceivable there might be a steamer in the market that will replace Ben Casey's favourite on the day? No, I, th I think I think he's off really short. I think all firms have got severe, not severe, but antibus liability. He's been favourite. He's been in the gang. We put him in at the end to show. We're back in the sixth wheel joint with Smash Place. That's the winning uh, PJ Moriarty. He's now 92 favourite. I said the, the, the Champagne Fever, Jacket and uh, Bally Casey. All the multiples will be totting up. Same with throwing Fayin up quite a hill. I guess. I mean, they're all totting up, and I think they'll go up around the 9 to 4 mark. Uh, I know, I agree with Dan. Smash Place has been. I think the smash has to be a real lifter on the day. He doesn't have the sexy profile of a, a dour stayer to win a race. If you look at the likes of uh, Boston's Angel, uh, uh, Lord Windermere, I think you've got to be a real tough prop. I used to do a dour stake and that type of horse. The Nichols horses, Black from the 25, Sam Winner 16s, just the par 33s. Not, nobody fancies any of them. Uh, Corrin Wood's been interesting. That's been solid at eights, and Carlingford Lock was left un, uh, unchanged at tens off the after he slip up from McCoy. I think if he swap jockeys and have Rui Walsh on that uh, uh, leopard stand, I think there'd be a much, be much better outcome for backers of the JP art. Mm. It, it's a really skewed market with the likes of Tacking the Soy, Wonderful Charm, you know, Champagne Fever in there. None of them are going to run. Or Felon's Boy was cut 16 from the 30th of the weekend. I still think that's the best best value bet in there. He'll go off around 7 to 1. He should be good for at least a place. And I won't give up on many clouds as well. I, I think he'd just stay. And he's 20 to 1. Number and a few bet. If you give him four pounds on the day, I think him and her failing both would better going up Cheltenham. And uh, yeah, Rebecca Curtis, hopefully another Cheltenham winner for Wales. So, uh, selection time then, uh, folks, uh, for both the Terry Biddlecombe National Hunt Chase and the uh, RSA Chase. Benny? Uh, for the, the four miler, uh, double seven at, uh, I think he's around 14s and Banda Slow around 25s. And for the RSA, uh, the two we just talked about, Carly Lock around 14s and Off Will and Spire around 16s. Dan? Uh, I know Rory's going to pick my Midnight Press, so um, it'll probably, I've, got, I've got just a par. He's the only one who's got a bit of juice left in his price in 20s. If Nichols goes for it, 
he's going to book a top claimer. You're not going to get 20s on the day, so that's probably the one for me. Dave? Um, uh, for the four-miler, definitely Edmund King for me. And for the RSA, and for which, by the way, Donald McCain says Collingwood definitely goes today. Did Judy McSutherland? He said he definitely goes. What a waste. <laughs> <laughs> so he definitely goes for it. Um, for the RSA, I'd like to see just a par turn up. I think he'll go for the four miler. If that's the case, Black Thunder. Yeah. Uh, Golf Fellow Boy is one of the best each way bets, value bets for the festival at 16. So I'm a real bet. And simply, I, I wouldn't give up hope on Mendy Express for the four miler. Uh, in my midnight career, 12s and 14s for me. Uh, Rory, are you uh, are you being attacked by uh, by something there? Um? Uh, yeah, Moby wanted um, Doctor Evil. Evil. <laughs> that he's, he's, um, <laughs> rubbish about Mini Clydes being a short runner. He is. Um, I haven't mentioned him for the RSA, but Moby did insist. Not a short runner. Um, he is. He is also a player for the RSA, and I I, I respect him. Um, that was probably his best performance at the weekend. Um, and the only decision there is whether you thought he stayed on well enough. I thought given they went too hard earlier on, he was fine. So there you go. That's Moby's opinion. I'll leave that alone. Uh, in terms of, of the my selections, um, Midnight Prayer I put up for the for the National Hunt Chase. I, I originally put up Mendip Express, and, and again, as um, as Jack was saying, if he um, if he lines up then I still really respect his chances. The only reason I haven't put him up uh, in the anti post preview is because Harry Fry uh, was very negative about him after he ran at Newbury. He said that he bled um, after slogging around and he said that you know the, the race bottomed him and now he was um, facing a race against time to get him back for the festival. So that's that's off-putting anti post but I still hope that I, I really like Mendel Express uh, and if he does turn up 100% in the day um, that this is the race for him, and I would still, um, I'd still be hopeful of his chances. But obviously, until we know that he's okay, it's difficult to back him anti post. And midnight prayer makes more appeal for me at the current prices, as long as you get in the 25s. Uh, for the RSA, again, yeah, uh, same old, same old. Carlingford Loch um, at the prices each way makes plenty of appeal, and um, for Whelan's boy would be my my main choice. Again, as Jack says, he's he's overpriced. You could argue that um, he was getting weight from um, from the one that beat him in the. I can't believe Mowgli's now having a go because I'm going against Mini Clydes. I'm sorry, mate. That's just the way it is. You know, I respect his chances, but I'm going for a Whelan's boy. He's, he's gone off and a half now. Um, yeah, a Whelan's boy is definitely overpriced for it, and, and you should be taking the price of him at the moment. Rory, right, um, I thought he jumped up his list. Do you have any thoughts on that? Sorry. Oh. Oh, well, I thought he jumped out to his left when he was. He did a little bit, but um, that that will be less of an issue at Cheltenham than it would be at Ascot. Exactly. And the one thing about him, his best form over hurdles was left-handed, and despite, I mean, he was allowed, he was he raced wide on the track, and and therefore he was a bit more likely to do that. Um, I don't think it'd be a major issue at Cheltenham, and obviously that showed. He did a lot of his running over hurdles from the front. He was absolutely fine being held up behind the front too. Um, and he was he was constantly moving forward until being restrained by Barry Garrity. So I've got no issue with where he'd be um, situated in the race, and I don't have a major problem with his jumping. Thanks, chaps. Uh, I'm with Benny for the NH Chase with double seven and Smad Place for me for the RSA. Uh, quite a few things to um, flag up this evening. But uh, first of all, thank you to the panel, and thank you to everyone for watching, and also particularly thanks for all the questions that we've had in tonight. Hopefully we've uh, flagged up a few and uh, covered all the answers, even if we haven't mentioned you actually by, by name. Uh, just to point out that uh, Friday is Friday midnight is the uh, deadline time for the final early bird discounts for Cheltenham tickets, so if you haven't got your tickets for the uh, races in March, then you can go to jpfestival.com and uh, buy them via, uh, via there. And there'll be a wrap uh, tomorrow from, uh, is that Dan, Dave and Rory tomorrow, guys? Yeah, I'm, I'm Paul. Yeah, and uh, Paul uh, also will be doing the wrap looking 
back at uh, the weekend action. Also to flag up our Cheltenham preview evening, which is getting closer on the 6th of March. Tickets for that are uh, on sale via jokerfestival.com and are at uh, £14, but half price £7 if you're a community member. So our community membership costs just £6 a month, so if you'd like to sign up for that, that would be uh, that'd be great, just in time for Cheltenham, and uh, all the exclusive content and tips will be provided there. And finally, next broadcast, nothing next uh, Monday, but the uh, next one will be the 28th, getting closer to Cheltenham all the time, Friday, and we'll be covering the Champion and World Hurdle, which by then pretty much means that we've covered uh, most of the uh, races, so hope to uh, see you back then. That's all, folks. So thank you for watching, and uh, good night.